And if you're ever travelling through to Tierra, around Lake Tierra, there's a little hut on the uh, right hand side of the road, and Ted Meth, Edward Meth, uh, Edwin, Edward built that hut. To the mic. Uh, right hand side of the road. Closer to the mic. Closer to the mic, yeah. So if you're going around to Tierra, there's a little hut there. And on the right hand side of the road is a little hut that Edward and Matthew's built and it's been restored. It's actually quite a neat little, uh, I've been had a look at it, it's got a little fire. It's tiny, but that's a little hut that he made. So that's a little bit of thing you can look at on the way. The other, the, the other family we haven't mentioned was the Wilson family, which was my, yeah, Granny Matthews, as I said, looked like Nana, uh, uh, looked like, um, like the Queen sitting there. That's how I remember her too. She just sat there. And uh, yeah, not much uh, hugging stuff. <laughs> but a few years ago, I was travelling around Australia doing a bit of a sabbatical, and um, I got a friend who's a vet on Kangaroo Island, and uh, she invited me over to stay with her. And uh, I was looking through her books, and in her book, she had all these Wilsons, and it's very distinct. The Wilsons are related to us, I, I, I spelled with two L's W I L L S O N. And she had a whole lot of these. Wilson's in her books. So I said to her, I think, you know, I wonder whether they might be related to me. And yeah, we got two or three of them in, and sure enough, they've been shipwrecked on this kangaroo island off, off the Adelaide coast. And they, and I found out they were related to um, a guy called AJJ Wilson, who's in the Markaraka Cemetery. I think it was the ancestor was his brother. So yeah, so if you go to Kangaroo Island, we've got relations there. <laughs> Interesting, the dog side of the family, um, one of our old relations, and again, he's buried at Mark Rock too, Henry Deansdale, he did a few reconnaissance trips out to New Zealand. And um, he toured all around New Zealand before deciding to emigrate here. And one of his trips, he, he diaried them all, and, if, um, and one, one of his trips, he went up to Lake Karawira or Lake Rotomahana. No, it wasn't, there was no Lake Rotomahana then, Lake Karawira. And um, he went to the pink and white terraces and he described these pink and white terraces in his diaries and uh, it was quite a fascinating description and then I always remember Nana, like Mum's mother, talking about when Mount Tarawera erupted, well I think it was about 1886 or something like that and she said, she always remembered in Gisborne it went black. When Mount Tarawera erupted all, this, all the um, stuff came out of Gisborne and um, the place was dark and they didn't really know what was happening. They wondered where the world was coming to an end. So there was no communication, but it was interesting that her, her husband's father had actually been out here and described those people like terraces which were lost in that eruption. So yeah, it was just another little interesting little thing. Now, Nana, Mum's um, mother, she was, one of the, she was pretty um, famous too. She was one of the first people in New Zealand to get a hip, hip uh, replacement. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was years and years and years ago. And she had a doctor called Dr. Nina Muir. That, she didn't do the operation, but Dr. Park, I think, was the guy that did the operation. But Nina Muir, she was a famous lady too, because she was one of the first ladies, in, well, the only lady in Gisborne, who did abortions in young girls. <laughs> totally, totally legal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up right Lane. She had a, she lived up Cedar Island, in fact the Lanford used to live up Cedar Island, just up, be, up beyond them. She lived there, and the girls used to go up there, and she used to, I don't know what she did, but she did that. So that was Nana's doctor. Um, that's true. And the other thing is, I guess, we, uh, we've talked about Charlie, there are, there are a few Charlie Matthews, and they're all quite famous. And um, so I think we just need to reflect on that. Uh, we had our grandfather, Charlie Matthews, and he was probably, he was a very, um, I don't know, quite benevolent man, but, if, but he also, one of the big things he did in life was guarantee a whole lot of money to build the, the freezing works just up the road here, probably about what, 10k, 5k? If you go over the hill, next hill, and look straight out, there's an old freezing works there. And he guaranteed about 20,000 pounds to build those works, and he and a whole lot of other people around here guaranteed that money. Um, unfortunately, they went belly up. Um, and, but he was probably the only person that actually fronted up with the 20,000 pounds back in those days, a long time ago. So he was a very honourable man, he was a city councillor, um, and uh, I think got a lot of respect because of fronting up with that money. The next famous Charlie Matthews, of course, was my brother, 
who, um, who represented New Zealand on several occasions, riding horses. Um, went to the Olympic Games in 1964 and was duct and inducted into the Equine um, Hall of Fame in Hastings in about three or four years ago, Charlie, was it? You were yeah. inducted into the Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yeah. So, Charlie. The other Charlie Matthews is a, uh, a, a nephew, uh, is a, um, a son of our, one of our cousins, and he um, works for the Royal Air Force in, in the UK, and he is a squadron leader and flies these, you know, the typhoons. So he's a, a fighter pilot. He's, um, he's done reconnaissance work, uh, you know, following um, Russian planes. Um, he's done all sorts of stuff, but he actually ended up being the um, squadron leader of the Red Devils display team. And he clocked up over a thousand hours on a typhoon. So he was our, the other Charlie Matthews is the famous. So he's a, probably a third cousin of you guys out there? Yeah, so, but he's our cousin's son. So there's three Charlie Matthews that are quite famous. So that's about all I've got to say. Um, to the young guys out there, I'll read to Charlie's 80th birthday in, in, um, in Lusa back in January. And he gave a little talk. He, he gave quite a, quite a, quite a good little talk and he was talk talking to his grandchildren and he said to them, he said to you, the young people out there, he said, you know, whatever you do in life, the most important thing is, is to pick your friends and make sure you pick good friends because if you pick good friends, you'll have no problems. So that's the message. Thank you.